Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Alan with Center Consoles Only. And I'm Brian. And we're here tonight with a pretty exciting project for us. This has been something that we've been toying with for quite some time, and we finally got an opportunity with a company called Orion Boatworks. And basically what that is, um, Orion was a company that originated in the early 2000s. Early 2000s, more or less, unfortunately, didn't continue due to the uh, recession back in those years. Um, Adriano is the owner of the company, and he picked up the mold some time ago, and we got in contact, believe it or not, through the powder coating of the Reef Runner 23 that we have. He owns a powder coating company, and he actually worked with us there, so that's where this whole conversation began. This was probably over, I don't know, six months, eight months ago at least, um, if not more. So he had the molds of this boat, which caught my attention first off uh, early on, and I saw he was slowly working on it and trying to um, you know, bring this brand back out. So the conversation came on through um, that and his existing business. We kind of worked out, a, um, I guess, an arrangement where CCO Yachts, which Brian basically handles, which is our full service brokerage, is gonna be the exclusive arm for sales for Orion Boatworks specifically. So with that, that conversation continued and we're always trying to come up with new and interesting content. So we saw what was the existing console, which we're gonna go over today. And that's where the Orion project name came from. Um, as you can see, it's quite simple. This is what they had, you know, when the whole company originated. So what we thought is if maybe we can get involved, use a little bit of our experience and bring you guys most importantly into this so we can mess around create a cool little experiment for us um, and design some of the parts of, of this Orion going forward. Adriano has been phenomenal with us, um, giving us this opportunity to be able to kind of take the reins on some of this designs and put it on not only our hands, but your hands as well. Um, and ultimately the idea is to bring together, you know, the best design possible for a simple 29 foot center console um, that has none of the fluff, just the items you need to be able to go out there and fish and do it well with a you know quality built boat uh, quality features and just you know a solid all-around hull so what we wanted to do is well I guess we can start off with a few of these I don't know if we can get into the uh, into our, our folder sure something I've done since I don't know when I always go through and obviously um, most of the center consoles only stuff and the stuff prior to that started due to just seeing boats and and liking certain designs and I've always I have 30,000 pictures in my phone um, just of the content we create to be able to show you guys through our platforms um, and we just keep things that we like just to you know just because we like them and we commend the companies for doing a great job most of these consoles as you know you can't really reinvent reinvent the wheel there's only so much you can do with this thing you can't flip it backwards you can't lower it down you're not going to move it to the side the basic idea is there and all we can do is try to take little bits of those things that we like um, and make it unique in whichever way possible. So what we did is if we if we click over to the iPad over here. And actually before we get to that, I want to make sure you guys go ahead and subscribe to our channel if you do like this content. Very true. Please like and share this video. That really helps us out to create this content, really get this out to as many people as possible. Um, by the way, of course this is live. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask, interrupt us. We are totally happy with that. We will definitely get to answering your questions as fast as they come in. Let's yeah, go ahead, Alan. I'm very good at forgetting to say that. So <laughs> thank you guys, we appreciate the support always. So going to the iPad here, I think we start, this is I believe the Invincible 46 Catamaran. Now, you know, these guys do everything well. Love the consoles, the simplicity of them. Uh, one little feature here that's really cool is this little footrest on the corner, I have loved that. I've seen that recently on a couple of boats. You can see the, the dash is quite simple. It's open. They used to have a plexi, and I believe it's still an option to be able to enclose your monitors. This one in particular basically has them recessed, so you have a bit of a visor, which is another feature after you talk to enough of these builders, um, you realize that it's important to try to block that sunlight and reduce the glare on the screens themselves. So this one in particular and, and several models coming out lately um, are foregoing, is that the right word? The sure. plexiglass and just leaving it clean and open. And they have this little bottom 
piece in there that ends up just kind of like a holder for your phone, your keys, um, as you're out there throughout the day, so they're not bouncing around. So yeah, uh, the new MFDs are a lot more tolerant of the salt water, salt air. Uh, they are hermetically sealed from the elements, uh, as opposed to a lot of the older uh, MFDs that actually needed something to block the water and that salt spray from getting in. So you have a little bit of an advantage there, less items, less clanging around, so to speak. Um, so yeah, it's a really nice clean feature, nice clean way to do it. Yeah. So again, we want to see what you guys think. And when you see a console like this, what really jumps out at you is what I guess we're asking you. Um, what are the features that you feel are a necessity on a console like this? Which ones maybe do you not feel are a necessity? Um, you know, this one obviously is top of the line catamaran, 46 footer. It's the absolute best of the best. So, you know, you can't put all of this in a 29 foot center console, obviously a simplified version. So all we're doing is looking at these, commending these companies like Invincible for doing an excellent job um, and just seeing what parts we kind of like here. As you can see, this here is a 27 a C line, I believe. Yep. They've done a great job with their consoles. Their interior layout is phenomenal. Um, I've always liked their, their 27 and their 34. Their 27 for being a 27 has an excellent layout. It doesn't feel like it's a 27 foot boat. Um, the console does feel, I'm not sure what the beam is on this. I don't know if you remember recall, but um, it feels like a much bigger boat. So Sea Lion does a great job with this. Uh, the rod holders along either side of the console is something that I've always personally liked. Having the ability to put those rods uh, kind of in that center of gravity out of the way where you're not really getting caught up. Um, even behind the leaning post, you sometimes get caught up with them. I feel that's a great spot for those rods as you're actually working them and getting them rigged to fish. Um, but as you're traveling, either side of that console is, is just phenomenal for, for rod storage. And to a point that Alan made, um, they do a phenomenal uh, job on this particular case and on the 34 as well of maximizing the space. And this is kind of one of the premises of the entire project is maximizing the amount of space that we have both in cockpit, uh, up towards the bow, alongside the gunnels, make sure the walkways are really, really easy to get through. Uh, you got hanging fishing pliers on you, it's not going to get snagged up on anything. So a lot of the reasoning for redesigning one of these consoles for the newer style of boat is incorporating that, that feeling of space regardless of the vessel that you're on. and that's kind of using it to the best of your ability and, and making the most out of what you got. Yep. One thing when it comes to this is, is we're kind of into symmetry, having the rod holders on both sides. So whether we went with a side door option or kind of like, you know, the older CVs would open up the, uh, the forward section to make that the entry to your rigging. Most likely um, in the demo boat, actually, there's a head option because they have the saddle tanks going forward. Um, we're talking with Adriano from uh, Orion about putting a 185 gallon main tank down the center and then having additional uh, saddle tanks optional if you want more fuel. But really what the access is gonna be is off that opposite side as you can see here and just opening it up, getting to your batteries, getting to your, your rigging and a bit of storage. So keep that in mind as well and let us know if you are into that you know, forward door. Would you like to try to see a sliding door? Um, or is a traditional kind of sliding, I mean side opening door uh, more to your liking. Just remember, if you do that and we do decide to go with rod holders on both sides, we're gonna have rod holders completely long on one side, the other side might only have one or two, if not any at all, which might look a little bit strange when you're rigged up and, and getting out there. Not, a, I'm sure everyone's not like that, but I know a few of us here all agree that uh, it looks weird to have it um, off that way. So, a, one thing that was important as well, and remember this is an 8-4 beam on the Orion, so it's not a beamy boat, it's, it's you know, streamlined, uh, it's made to perform well, it's made to be economical with the twin 200 Suzuki's that they have on that demo boat doing 33, 34 miles an hour, you're doing, you know, burning 2.8 miles per gallon, so the fuel economy is phenomenal, and that's what the whole point of this boat is. So you can go long distances, fish, and it's not gonna break your bank account. Um, so we can't go that wide, but what we'd like to try to accomplish is, and we, we brought here some you know, dry erase markers to be able to kind of illustrate what we're thinking. We want to be able to do either dual 16 inch 
screens, and these would be similar to what we have on the, on the refronter without the controls on the side, keeping them very streamlined and tight. We're not gonna have really the width to do much more than that, and I'm not sure if you remember the width. Uh, we're looking at the Simrads in, in specific, uh, the width that we would need to be able to fit this with a little room to spare, but on top of that, also get the height. If you would decide to do a single 24, be able to get the height to do that and either put it to one side you know, and put your vessel view VHF. Actually, you don't even need a vessel view um, or some of those other items with, with these Simrad units. Um, but, you know, VHF, whatever you want to put on, on the side of it. So keep that in mind as well. Um, that's the idea. There's only so much width we can work with before it starts getting tight on both sides of this Orion. But we definitely want to be able to fit dual screens. Obviously, 212 is going to be more, you know, economical financially. But some, some people want to go 16s or do that 24. Um, yeah, ultimately we know that we're going to lose a little space when we put the rod holders on either side of the console. But by calculation and some of the drawings that we've been sent, we know that we need roughly 34 inches to accommodate two 16 inch screens. We also know that we need roughly, uh, let me see here, 15 and a quarter inches tall to accommodate a 24 inch screen. So we definitely need to make this a little taller just to get us the ability to incorporate those screens as well as maybe have a switch panel, Boca Tech, or uh, Blue Seas type switching there. Make it really nice and clean, one single slate, uh, in potentially a polycarbonate uh, flush mount finish, which would look pretty sweet, we think. Yep. Um, so yeah, th those are some of the things that we have to accommodate for uh, when adding those rod holders to the side and taking up that console space there for our, our displays. Now a couple things that, uh, do we have a question? Hold on. We got, again, this is happening live. We're going to pick up these questions as we have. Um, happy birthday. Thank you. It is my birthday today. I uh, appreciate that. Glad we can spend it with uh, 35 of you at the moment and some more coming. So I appreciate the time and, and we love doing this. So um, we hope you find some value and enjoy this process along with us. It's a lot of fun. Um, how does it take the water? It takes it well. I mean, what do you, what do you want? The best thing to do is to set up a sea trial. Um, it's, a, it's a nice riding boat. Definitely, uh, you know, a 29 twin engines. Um, it's a, the saddle tanks is a different feel, be completely honest, compared to the center uh, tank. So the 185 down the center should give it a more solid feel, and that's why we've been working with Orion to possibly do that. That should, uh, that should make a bit of a difference, but as it is and has that demo boat sits, and if you wanted to do saddle tanks, it, it's a really nice riding boat. 24 degree dead rise, 8.4 beam. We don't have the weight exactly yet because the uh, deck liner mold is being created as we speak. We want to actually get the final numbers once everything is said and done, once this final console is done. And then after this project, we're going to likely get involved in a leaning post project, which will tie all this together and, and add um, you know, the final touches to this. Obviously, we, we've spoken a bit about the deck, adding storage in the deck compared to what you've seen in that demo. So. It's just the things we've heard from you guys and, and we appreciate the feedback. Uh, let us know what else you want to see and, and we'll work with Adriano at Orion to, to see if we can make that happen. And again, reach out to CCO Yachts, any questions you have uh, regarding that. Uh, design tackle stations, yes, there is a lack of it right now. Um, that's going to be integrated into the leaning post and maybe in the future we might have another leaning post which will add a, a secondary live well. There's 50 gallons in the transom right now, so it's a, it's a good amount. Um, maybe we can leak out a design. Maybe we can leak out a design. We've been drawing stuff. I mean, again, this is what we do when we're on our spare time. When we leave here, we, we do that. I mean, it's just, it's, just, it's just fun. So I'm sure a lot of you guys can, can relate. Um, to clear it up, it is a 29 with the bracket. This boat originally was an inboard boat. It was a 27 because that's the interior size of this boat. When we spoke with Adriano, um, we got, we've been on, a, on plenty of 26s and 27s, and this boat was significantly larger just stepping on board. So if you put this, what was 27, now you know, changed to a 29, next to a 27 and next to a 29, it, much, it fits much better alongside the 29. That's the comparable to it. And when you look at any Euro transom boat, you're gonna see that the, the, the hull surface actually ends where that Euro transom uh, I guess starts, that's where you have your, your, your drain plug, it goes upward and then you have that extra flotation exactly the same as you do with a bracket. So there's no difference. There's very few boats that have that running surface that run all the way back, that Euro transom, and I have a 
probably 500 pictures that can prove that if you guys want to see it. I, we've done a lot of research and before talking to him about changing it to a 29, that was um, the research that we did. And, and the whole thing is not to try to make it seem bigger than it is. Put it next to a 27, put it next to a 29 uh, Euro transom and you're going to see the 29 is what it, it, it's a proper fit. So just to elaborate on that point a little bit, um, what we really, and the reason we really, really, really came to that conclusion is it does 100% extend the running surface of the vessel. Once that vessel gets that power from that engine, it's using the buoyancy from that bracket to actually help it stick that hole shot and jump out. It doesn't raise the, uh, it doesn't raise the bow, doesn't get proud, and it just shoots right out of the hole. So it does in fact raise that, I'm sorry, it does in fact extend that uh, running surface, which is usually the argument when it comes to a bracket or no bracket. And again, like Alan mentioned, the Euro transom is more of a fiberglass finish from the water line up, and underneath it's exactly the same as a, a bracketed boat yeah. on most center consoles. A question there is uh, the length again com without the bracket and comparing it to a 25 white water. If you put it next to a 25 white water, it's going to be significantly larger than that. And actually, it might be a, a hair longer than the 28 white water, which is a, a, I believe a 28 and some change uh, length overall. This boat is, with engines and everything, 30 and a half length overall. Yep. Um, so it's a comparable to the 28 white water, not the 25. Um, let's continue on to something else. One thing that we want to do here, obviously, when we look at a console, you know, we're not we're not that tall. I'm six four, he's five six. <laughs> it's just the angle of the cameras. Uh, no, I'm just kidding. Um, we don't like a tall a tall con a console, and I'm sure a lot of you guys don't, especially on a 29 foot boat. There's some some boats we see that have you know monstrous consoles that make it tough to, to see over. So to be able to accommodate the height for that 24 inch screen, what we're gonna do is actually, or what the idea is, let's, let's see what you guys think. We're gonna drop the angle of this dash a bit so it leans a little bit further and we're gonna actually, which you've seen on some boats here, um, create a visor which will keep this depth um, to something worth, you know, worthwhile so we can have a stand through second station, but now we can elongate this dash area to be able to accommodate that 24, be able to provide a little visor so you don't get the glare and you can see it properly and not increase the height of this, of this console. So um, little details that uh, we think about, I'm sure a lot of uh, boaters out there think about, whether you're, you know, the weekend warrior or a manufacturer, but it's things that we've seen over, you know, seeing hundreds and hundreds of boats. Um, everyone has their own take to it and their own opinion. A lot of these things are purely opinions. What we're saying here, uh, some of you at home might be saying that's pure uh, trash. But you know, it, <laughs> there's not one boat out there for everyone, and that's why it's great to have so many brands and and so much competition where everyone's pushing the envelope and trying to, um, you know, put better products out there. So something like this, a console, a leaning post, it, it it's good to take the time and, and that's why we wanted to bring you guys into it to see not only what you know three or four of us thought here or Adriano uh, at Orion but have you know what could be thousands of you guys and having your opinion brought into a console because I'm sure there's things you guys have thought about that we have it's never crossed, crossed our minds so um, definitely drop those in there. Hey. So if you look here this is what Alan means when he says uh, a visor if you look at that blue line there that would actually be the plane at which a an MFD would sit. So that setback would give you that anti-glare protection there. Um, also make it really, really, sm really, really slick when it comes to any overspray of any kind that comes over uh, the hull sites. So that would be a plane in which those MFDs would sit and then this would actually be what would protect you or it from the elements. Yes, very good. Another thing that we were kind of in between and maybe you guys can drop some uh, thoughts and ideas Right here, most likely will be you know a, a single strip where we put our switch panel, Boca Tech, whatever brand it may be, uh, keeping that real clean. You know, along this, I'm very good at drawing, as you can see. I'm not going to put every switch in there, but you get the idea. Brian's going to go ahead and do it. Um, there are some some consoles that you see that have a dedicated space for that, which has you know a bit of like a 45 degree angle. Um, made for that, maybe we're wrong, but when we see a console like this, 
I personally like to see kind of a clean canvas, so you have the ability to do just about anything and everything that you can dream up. If there's areas and cutouts and spaces um, dedicated to certain things, then you're limited to that and you can't do anything else. So having um, a nice space here, which we were thinking of making this, what was it? 16 it was or 18, 18 inches? 18 inches, yep. Actually, from this angle here, reducing that a bit so it was a little bit flatter. Uh, and maybe we can go here, Eric, real quick. How tall is the console now? 50 inches. 50 inches right now is the, uh, is the height. Um, if you look at the, at the iPad here, this is, a, this is a Contender 44, I believe. And one thing that was super impressive to me when I got on this boat in particular um, was the, the size of that dash. They had two 24s there. They had their switch panel, they had VHS on either side, they had USB ports, um, and it was just super clean. It was just a flat, big dash, but this whole bottom area where the steering wheel is and your cup holders and, and throttle um, was a, a bit lower. So once you get the extension from the wheel, it, the wheel ends up in a, in a pretty good spot. It's, a, it's you know not one of these that are tall and, and kind of jammed up. It gives you the ability to hold the wheel um, horizontally, which I kind of like to be able to spin and to dock. Um, I don't really like the vertical ones too much. Um, if, I, if I had a choice, I'd prefer that. So having this flat area to be able to lay this, uh, all your equipment exactly how you want it um, was, was really nice. And then just that huge dash to be able to play with it however you want was kind of the goal with what we wanted to do here. If you wanted to do the 216s, the big 24, you can move it wherever you want. You can put the steering wheel wherever you want. Um, again, not being a wide console, ideally it's going to be most likely on the left hand side, but again, we can do uh, what works with you and Orion is completely on board with doing that as well. So let us know what you guys think there. Brian, I'm going to look at some questions if you got anything else to yeah. add there real quick. Well, like Alan said, just to reiterate the point, the thought process being keep them nice flat surfaces so we don't pigeonhole ourselves into having to put a helm in a particular spot, having to put cup holders in a particular spot or having to put switch panels in a particular spot. Depending on the budget, you might go with a Boca Tech switch panel, you might go with standard rocker switches, and something of a flat surface will definitely accommodate either without having a requirement placed on the purchaser uh, themselves. So it's, it's definitely something that you guys can customize to your liking and to your absolute budget, um, being the boat that you know is attainable for pretty much every man. Okay, a couple of questions. Can the steering wheel, be, steering wheel be placed in the center? Kind of touched on that for uh, a minute ago. We can move that around if that's what you want, not a problem. Um, something else we have not mentioned yet is that the idea with this is to make it a three-piece mold. So to, in order to not have this cutout piece here, which um, you know ends up your footrest, we're gonna actually do something uh, similar to what CB does, some of these guys that actually have the two pieces, one on the left, one on the right, and then there's going to be a face piece here which will allow us to contour that footrest and a toe kick underneath here. And possibly we're thinking about doing that on the outsides as well. Let us know what you guys think about having a toe kick all around this console. Is it necessary for you? Is it not? Um, we have a, a picture here. Eric, if you can shoot over to uh, the iPad real quick. We have what, this is a CB39, I think this is Two Rivers that's redoing this boat, it's coming out awesome if you haven't seen that. Um, but this has kind of the rod holders on the side, it has a, a subwoofer um, after this console and then you can see down here what I'm talking about, having that footrest integrated into uh, the forward portion of this console. You can have that area down the center here which you know could have a combing bolster or, or some C-deck just so you can lean against it and not hit anything. Um, we're not going to put any switches up in the front. The switches, like we said, are going to be up in this area. I think we can pop off of that. And then ultimately have a nice contoured uh, footrest here so you can sit comfortably, put your feet down. If you're going on you know, to the Bahamas long trip, you'll, you'll be extremely comfortable set up like that. Guys, those of you just tuning in, we are going over the console idea for the Orion Boatworks 29cc. We want all of your input. Uh, we're looking for ideas that we can incorporate or help incorporate, uh, help Orion incorporate into their design. Um, please, if you like this video, definitely subscribe, like, share, anything, any more subscribers we get helps us out quite a bit. 
Um, and we're just going over at this point the kind of uh, talk about profile. Alan's talking about a step there that's integrated into the three-piece style mold, uh, much like what I've illustrated here. It just gives us kind of uh, that flexibility, makes it very, very clean. Again, gives you plenty of space there. Um, Alan's impressed with my artistic abilities over there at, uh, on the fly. It's pretty good. Uh, so yeah, that's, that's basically what we're thinking. Not that it's, again, right or wrong, but it's, it's just kind of the idea that we have right now uh, of incorporating the steps into uh, the console. A small detail here as well with the rod holders that may end up on, on either side of this console. To be able to, uh, I guess, grab a little bit more space, we're thinking about putting a 15 or 30 degree decline this way, so it serves multiple purposes. One, you gain maybe an inch, half, inch. half an inch. Not a whole heck of a lot, but every every little bit counts. Um, I was gonna say a joke, but I'll stay away from that. <laughs> Thank you for yeah, sparing yeah, yourself. And, and then, um, obviously, it, it, if you have a little bit of a decline there, you don't have any sort of water buildup. It drops down and, you know, hosing it or rain, you know, it just drops down. Obviously, the rod holders will have uh, drains with a bit of plumbing, which will work their way out probably right under here so you don't even see them real clean. And that's the whole thing with this boat, trying to keep it minimalistic so it's as clean and simple as possible. Everything you need, nothing you don't. Trying to keep the price down, not because anything is done cheaply. You're going to see that the everything that's being um, worked on by Adriano and, and our team here at CCO, um, CCO Yachts with the sales side uh, is all high quality. So it's just eliminating that fluff that you don't need and that's the whole point. All this thing is just to not have 82 different contraptions on it. The idea is just to make it super clean, super simple, integrate as much as possible into the, uh, the electronics, keep this real simple again without repeating myself 30 times. Um, and that's it. That's the that's the whole goal. So this thing has kind of an angle forward, which not really sure what sense this makes. So that probably is not going to be there. But what we are going to do is this is sitting on our dockside set here, flat. You know, pretty close to flat. And you can see it's pretty close to level. It might even have a bit of an upward angle to it. What we're going to do, since we're going to drop this a little bit, elongate it a little to fit that 24 inch. We're actually probably going to give it a downward angle. That way it only improves your visibility over the dash once you're getting on plane. This boat really doesn't have any bow rise when you get on plane, but that little bit, once you float in the water, the weight of the engines, fuel, what have you, is going to bring that transom down a bit. So the idea is when it sits in the water, this thing is pretty close to level. If not, maybe with a little bit of a downward angle. So when you do get on plane, uh, the visibility is still phenomenal the whole way through. Actually, if I can interject here for one second, one reason for actually bringing a visor a little bit, maybe a little more than what you would typically see in a visor, is that we've had a lot of requests for second stations. Now, when you're working with a second station, you've got to have a, a nice, secure place, large space to put your feet on and actually be comfortable. Uh, that's also another reason for flattening this surface out as well. Uh, this would be one of your steps in one of the corners to get up to the top of the console and step through uh, to your second station. So uh, again, a lot of the stuff here or everything here is, is purpose built with input from you guys. Um, a, lot of, a lot of interest in the second station. We love the look of those and they're obviously extremely useful. Uh, because we expect it to have a fairly shallow draft, you guys are gonna be able to fish this in the flats in the bay, uh, but she's extremely well seafaring and take her offshore. Back to you, Alan. All right, I'm sure you have some questions. The body from the constant movement is necessary. Yeah, I mean, there's there's a lot of design work that's going to go also not into just the cosmetics of this, but the stability and the strength of the piping, um, which is going to end up to the custom hardtop that you see on the Orion now. That those those hardtops are the cleanest hardtops you'll probably ever see in your life. <clears throat> All handmade uh, by a gentleman up. I'm not sure. I it was uh, the St. Pete area, up north somewhere from us. Uh, Beautiful job. We actually have the box around here somewhere uh, that's going to go integrated into that second station. If you did want a pass-through second station, and obviously if you wanted a little, you know, bird's nest up there or or Marlin Tower, that's a possibility also. So all that stuff comes down to your base down here. I'm sorry, I was looking at this. I just realized the camera's up there. Um, all that comes down to the base and the strength of the of all that. So you're not, you know, ripping your deck. 
um, or pulling this whole console off if you have um, that extra weight up top. So at that point with the second station, there might be um, added uh, stability or stabilizers with piping down to the future leaning post, which you've seen, which is also nice. You can add rod holders there and, uh, you know, staircase to work your way up, all kinds of different designs. And, you know, the beauty of that is you can kind of, we can work with you and Orion is open to it as well to kind of design what, what works with you with the piping. So um, also being in the early stages, being among the first to uh, purchase, you can be involved with a lot of these, these design aspects as they're happening, which is, you know, not something you get often. So Adriano has been absolutely amazing over there and we appreciate the opportunity to kind of make a project out of this. So again, we've never had the opportunity. We've been around a lot of boat builders. We've had the, the we've been blessed to be able to do that. We, we, we look forward to continuing it, but um, to be able to actually mess with designs and stuff, it's like a, it's a, it's a cool little thing for us. And, and it's, I think, nice content for our, for our viewers to watch as well. So I don't know if we have, I mean, one detail just hit me here. This one in particular had like really rounded edges. Um, we're probably gonna tighten that up a little bit. Obviously we don't want sharp edges anywhere, but we're not gonna make it that bubbly. We're gonna make it a little a little sharper, a little more modern looking. Yeah, and as, as we slim it up, we've gotta take advantage of as much real estate as we've got. And when you radius at two inches here, you go ahead and lose an inch on either side, which is quite a bit of real estate to lose when you're actually shrinking it in order to incorporate those rock holders on either side. So yeah, it's, uh, it's keeping it nice and modern. Um, keeping in those nice tight tight lines of the Orion uh, that it already has in the hull. Um, so just incorporating that into the new console. It's, uh, like we said, a lot of fun, quite a bit of work. And the more you think about it, the more ideas start kind of swirling around. So you kind of create a snowball effect. Um, so again, this is something that's not going to be rushed. Uh, it's going to be well thought out. We want you guys to be highly involved in it. We're going to be posting as we go. We're going to show you some of the uh, detail on the construction process as well as uh, the new boats come along and uh, kind of bring you in so you know exactly what Orion Boats is building. Um, and again, CCO Yachts is a full service brokerage. We handle all kinds of pre-owned boats, but we're working now starting with uh, Orion as their exclusive sales uh, outlet. But we work with other companies as well. We work with Reef Runner, Sea Lion, uh, Vela Boatworks might be one we work with. So a lot of the factory direct companies that um, you can work with, obviously direct, you know, we can also work with you through our brokerage. It's no extra cost for you guys at all. There's nothing added for, for you to come through us. Um, and what we try to do is, is help you make the right choice through uh, the bit of expertise that we've uh, compiled over, over the years. So um, actually one thing we haven't talked about is the creature comfort of the forward seating. Um, it's, I'm not sure how well we can see it over here, uh, but the forward seating has always been a big deal. Uh, while we think that the original forward seating is a little bit low at 14 inches, kind of gives you that crouching feeling, maybe raising it up a couple inches, and adding a recess is something that we have as an option to kind of give us a uh, kind of a recess. When you sit down, you can hunker down, you can tighten your, your feet in if you happen to get into some rough water. Uh, just gives you kind of a, an extra feeling of safety um, we also thought about potentially incorporating some hand holds uh, for the folks who sit up front, maybe a cup holder, combo uh, rod holder up front as well uh, towards the front of that elevated section for the rod holders. You know, there's a lot of different ideas there and we'd love to hear what you think about that. Um, forward seating is always something we hear about with families and guys trying to get more people out there or have larger fishing teams, need more seats obviously. Um, so definitely please uh, tell us what you think about something uh, about your ideas uh, in forward seating. Is this recess for the headrest um, a requirement? Can you live without that if you have a nice angle uh, for the backrest there? Yeah, something uh, that was mentioned here as well. Uh, okay, Des mentioned removing the forward uh, seat altogether, which we've seen on some of the older boats. We were on a 25 contender that we're selling through the brokerage um, as we speak. And that one had just a straight shot down big door to open towards the rigging and then a bit of space to have a, a removable cooler. Uh, let us know what you think about that. We'd like to just see what, what your idea is. If we just, you know, we personally kind of like to have the seat in there. It's good to have, this boat's not going to have a lot of seating. So 
it's good to have something in there, but it's also nice to have extra coolers if you can. So, you know, me personally, I don't know what you think and what the guys back there think, but um, both options are great with me. I actually like to have coolers and I hate having stuff on the deck while you're trying to fish uh, scattered everywhere that you're tripping over and you just can't get to your stuff. Spear fishing for you guys that do that or scuba diving, even worse, you know the amount of gear that you guys take out there. Um, so it kind of makes some sense. So let us know what you think. We want to get this information from you. Um, learn from this, pass it along to Orion and then see how many of these ideas actually uh, make it to the final design. So we're actually building some stuff here too on our spare time uh, to kind of feel the dimensions of this thing. Um, again, it's gonna be roughly this, but again, once you add the rod holders, you're gonna, there's a lot to play with. So it's nice to see it a kind of in, in physical form, <clears throat> even though we've done it through computer renderings. Uh, Brian's drawn up a, a few, and we might, we might post those up so you guys can see it also. But um, again, I don't know if you have anything else, but. No, actually one thing I, I've always wondered about, a lot of contenders do it, a lot of CVs do it, and we've had this conversation a few times. I think we saw it a few minutes ago on that Invincible. Um, how do you guys feel about that switch panel down here? That's one thing that I've always been curious about. I personally like it where it's a little bit more visible, a little easier to see, um, but a lot of guys like it down here because it's, again, they'll put a plexi cover on it, uh, make it very, very hard to hit by mistake, uh, and keep it out of the elements. So that's always something that I've thought of, um, you know, in case you want to incorporate a large screen only on the top there. And uh, we actually, I don't think I've even spoken about that. Uh, just because here we might incorporate the combing bolster option um, as well. So definitely like to hear from you guys about that. All right. Well, another question. Oh, you want to get it? No, go ahead. All right. Take out the seat and just make a place for a cooler. All right, Salty. We got it. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. We, we, we really enjoy seeing these messages. Um, does it create noticeable room when you notch both sides like the contender you showed earlier? I like the idea of being more open. Feel the sides on this size boat. Feel the sides. Does it create noticeable room when you notch both sides like the contender? Is that like the... I think it means with the rod holder. The rod holders? And then, and then the top portion of the console is set in. And I think it does because generally speaking, your shoulders are going to be wider than your hips. So you will gain that width Especially there. Now, keep... <laughs> look at this. Keeping in mind, of course, that the piping <laughs> is, going to, is going to marry typically into that rod holder set in. <clears throat> um, but even still, it's, it's a couple of pipes versus an entire console sticking out an extra three inches, four inches on either side. So yeah, I, I think, you know, fundamentally and, and, and in person, you're going to feel like there is more space. Again, perception is a feeling that you have, we have, and we perceive it to be more space, even if it actually isn't, um, specifically when you have rods in that space and stuff, but it will feel much wider than it, than it is, I think. Yeah, I mean, all these things are a bit of give and take, obviously. You know, you add the rod holders, you only have 8.4 of beam to work with. Um, so you lose a little bit of your dash space. The idea is how much of that dash space do you really need? Are you gonna put dual 24s on this boat? Not likely. Most people are gonna put, you know, a single 16 like the demo boat has, two 12s. Um, dual 16s like we have on the reef runner is amazing if you're able to do that. Um, and I personally really like just that single screen which mag bay does uh, pretty often and i i love what they do it just looks simple and clean and and you know simple to me is is beautiful so no, it's um, elegant that, i think that's like the perfect word yeah it's, it's, it's almost like when you have a, a closet that's too big or you have a garage when you didn't have a garage before and you just start packing all kinds of junk in there that's what kind of happens i think with with this if you have all that room you're going to just add stuff that's really not necessary we want to have the necessary stuff your screen your wheel your throttle we're talking about possibly getting some of the safety stuff that, that a lot of companies just don't think about. Uh, maybe a Siren Marine, squeezing that in there. Maybe uh, an EPIRB, an ACR uh, Tech um, EPIRB or PLB or something like that and just make them standard on these boats. So, you know, when you leave with one of these, God forbid the worst happens, um, you know, you'll, you'll be taken care of and that way with center consoles only or CCO yachts selling, the, selling these things or um, Adriano at Orion building them and getting them out. You know, it's a little peace of mind that, that we all did our part to make sure that you guys were protected, your families were protected, 
and you know just hate to see those occurrences in the in the news and if we can do our part to uh to eliminate that we we definitely will so to your point um one thing that we absolutely required out of this out of this project and out of this partnership with ryan uh was that that safety and that lamination fact that lamination schedule be uh, not only appropriate but way overbuilt so that there's no warranty necessity and you guys are going to go out there in as solid a boat as you can possibly build uh, we're going to go through as alan mentioned the entire lamination process from the mold making all the way through to the assembly uh, we're going to show you how these boats are built show you that they've been re-engineered a couple times over to make sure that we have the most solid platform to build on um, i mean so much engineering so much time has gone into this uh, to determine the stringer placements, the bulkhead placements, uh, the lamination at each location, the way that they're actually bonded in, uh, the way the caps can be bonded to the deck, uh, liner. I mean, everything that's going to happen and going to be shown, there's absolutely nothing to hide here, which is one of our favorite things. We're completely transparent of how these boats are built, how they ride, and we really, we, we can't wait. Uh, I get kind of giddy, and I know Alan does, and the guys in the shop do, about this process because we've always wanted to be a part of manufacturing something in the marine industry and being a part of this is kind of really neat. Um, having you guys be a part of this is extremely awesome for us. So we appreciate your feedback as much as humanly possible. We don't have all the experience in the world. Uh, I certainly don't have all the experience in the world. I don't know all the answers, neither, none of us do. Um, so if there's anything that you guys have seen that you say, hey, this was a must have in my conditions, we'd love to hear it whether it has to do with console or anything else in the boat. You know, uh, another thing that was asked here was a possible compartment for loose items up here. Uh, that's definitely possible, not within the mold, just the way that it's structured, but uh, you know, an after, after the fact piece to have a little drop-in space here if you're not um, doing that second station where you need this uh, to stand on, you know, we could come up with something and I think that's a good idea to have uh, a place for your just your keys, your phone, the things that you want dry, that you don't want flying everywhere. We all know if you've been on the center console long enough, uh, this area up here ends up being where your hat gets thrown, where your, you know, all your junk goes. So having compartments for it is, uh, is a really good idea. Thank you for that. And uh, there's a couple boats that have done it. I think Albury Brothers is one that was mentioned there. Um, so we'll look into that and, and I think that's a, that's a, good, a good addition for sure. Um, I think there was another question here. Is it 425 capable with the Yamaha XTO? Uh, it's rated for 600 horsepower. Um, so, although haven't looked into that yet, I'm sure that that should be doable. Um, this boat, there are a couple singles out there, so it does run well with just a, a standard single, 300, 350. So, a 425 should be should be pretty interesting to to look into. Won't say anything for sure, but it seems like it would uh, it would be possible. Um, let me see. I saw that one. Saw that one. All right. Head or storage options? Head or storage options. So I'll take that one. Um, the head, it, unfortunately, on the new design going forward, it's going to have that 180 gallon center mounted tank below the console. We won't have the amount of space necessary to incorporate a head um, just because the height of the console, we want to try and maintain it low, uh, like we said before, at that 50 inches mark. Uh, so we're not going to have a uh, space for it in the head uh, or space for it under the, the console. On the current demo boat, we have saddle tanks, as Alan mentioned earlier on, uh, and there is a drop down space in there for a head. Uh, but be, we realize that most of the requests have been for more fuel, more fuel, more fuel um, over, you know, having a head option. So again, taking uh, your comments into consideration, we realize that a larger tank down the center with auxiliary tanks on the uh, saddle type tanks, uh, probably makes a, a bit more sense for most folks who are interested in this uh, in this boat than than maybe a marine head does. One thing uh, going into that, this boat again is is going to be built for pretty much strict fishing. It's not going to be uh, the comfort cruiser. Cruiser, there's not going to be a lot of seating. You're going to have the leaning post. You can throw some bean bags in the back. We're probably going to have a forward seating option, uh, just small pods similar to uh, like a Valhalla that sort of thing. So it's not, it's not meant for just a family uh, to go out there cruising. If you, if you want all those things, you're, you might want to look at something else. Um, 
but that was that was the toss up. Do we add more fuel or do we leave that space in the console for a head? So ultimately, the like Brian was mentioning, more fuel was was one of the top uh, messages we received. Can we add more fuel on top of the 180 or 185, whatever that is down the center? Um, so we actually eliminated a couple hatches that we were looking to add to the deck on, on the port and starboard side of the console itself to be able to just leave that open for saddle tanks because there was so much um, action in, in, within that question alone. So, and, it's, and yeah. actually, if you don't mind, um, so, and just to give you a little idea or a little background on it, we live in, in South Florida, so we're very, very fortunate. We can ride out two miles or so and we're trolling for dolphin. Uh, the further north you go, the further you got to travel in the Gulf, the folks travel an extreme distance to get to the fishing grounds. Fuel is a big deal outside of South Florida. I mean, we can get as far as, uh, I believe we were talking to a gentleman today who was in Central Florida and he's got a 40 mile ride out to the fishing grounds on the East Coast. Uh, further than that in Jacksonville, we know it's 60 miles out. You get up into the Carolinas and you're going to be running another 60, 70 miles. So that fuel for a lot of people is, is far more important just in safety factor alone, just to get back. Yeah, so again, this is gonna be the boat that's built for you know, the serious fishermen. Um, it's great for charter captains. It's gonna be a great bait boat for the yacht guys. Um, that's really what it's built for, tournament, tournament guys and really just a weekend boater that just does nothing but fish. 95% uh, of the, the people that we know that come in and say, okay, I want all these comfort, all this comfort, all this comfort, end up not using a lot of that comfort, a lot of the cabin, a lot of those um, little details that they seek at first um, with the right intention. We've all done it, been in that, in that situation plenty. But then when it comes to the, uh, the real weekend, whatever time you can get out there, it's, it's basically you know, a few uh, guys and girls going out to fish. And um, you know, that's kind of the, the group that this is gonna land towards. So again, every boat is, is not gonna accommodate everyone. Um, and the more options we add to this, the more expensive it's gonna get, the more time it's gonna take to turn one around. So the point is to keep the lead times low, keep the price low, and just get you know, a good amount of these out there for that specific niche of boater. So just wanna kind of make that clear because we do get questions about seating and rear bent. We're gonna do as much as we can, and that's the same thing Adriano from Orion was was talking about. Simple, simple, simple. The less we do, the better it's gonna be for the target market we're aiming for here, which is you guys that send messages day in and day out saying, "Hey, can we find something that's you know above 23 feet that you know isn't 280 thousand dollars?" So the whole point with this is to keep it under 200 grand, you know, mid 100s, depending. What, how you want to outfit it. If you put a ton of electronics on it, obviously that changes. If you go from Suzuki to Mercury to Yamaha, that's gonna, that's gonna fluctuate a little bit. So it all depends on how you want to outfit it, but the whole idea is just to keep them simple, as inexpensive as we can get them, so we can provide you know, this product to you, which we feel that um, would, be, would be great to, to put out there in the mix of, of the action. So um, I think we kind of covered everything. Let me see. We travel 40 nautical miles in Australia. Well, there we go. That's a perfect example. It's an 80 mile trip. I mean, and that's without fishing. Maybe fold down seats in the front. Yeah, so to Alan's point, while, while the creature comforts aren't at the forefront of the development of the Orion 29cc, there are going to be options coming down the pike. Uh, we've got that pod or pill style seating concept uh, in our heads and in some early, early renderings where you'll have access straight to the bow, but still have a couple of loungers to give you, you know, maybe another four seats on the boat. Transom seating is gonna be a little bit tough just because we have that aquarium live well that is close to 55 gallons. I mean, it's a, it's a massive transom live well for an 8.4 beam. Uh, really make sure you get as much possible bait, again, targeting that, that avid fisherman. Um, but there will be options for extra seating. I think, uh, I think that's gonna be the most important creature comfort that we're going to be adding, um, besides obviously the extreme fishability of the machine. Um, but you know, obviously the extreme creature comforts like the head, we're, we're probably gonna bypass those, yeah. Susan, I wanna talk to you for a second. <laughs> this is not a men only boat by any means. I know plenty of women and we've seen it through social media, social media lately that'll dance circles around all of us combined when it comes to any sort of fishing. Hands down. Myself so, specifically. Yeah, <laughs> we, we enjoy boats. You know, I've fished most of my life, but uh, you know, 
I think I've lost any sort of knowledge that I've had. I enjoy fishing with, you know, the Invincible guys and uh, uh, JC and Sarah and people like that that uh, really, you know, make it easy for us to catch fish because we try to do it on our own and we're not very successful. So uh, we ride on boats. We try to, you know, pass along content for you, but we're not the best at, at most of these things. We just, we like to put a lot of effort out there and we hope you guys enjoy it. So Susan, not men only. The fact that you're here with us is amazing. Um, not sure what your idea is she might be with this about boat. Not having a head. Well, not having a head. Yeah, I mean that that could be the only thing, but it was unfortunately difficult. There could be a possibility of putting just one that that is deck height there with a you know kind of like a, with a tank um, just for emergencies because um, I know the bucket situation is not exactly mm -hmm. ideal. But maybe maybe some sort of composting style if there's a low profile unit out there. You know, we'll, again. We're going to try and incorporate as much as humanly possible in this thing. The less we have to mold into the actual deck, liner, cap, hull, everything, uh, the better we're going to be able to keep that price point for everyone. And we don't want this to get out of control um, where it becomes unattainable. Uh, that's, that's not the thought process of this build. The thought process is to keep it as simple as possible, you know, keep it as close to attainable for as many people as possible. Well, another thing that, that, you know, I feel we, we are kind of good at is when we see something that's been done uh, over and over again in a certain way, we usually try to think outside of the box and, and, and how it can be done differently. That's how, you know, everything that center consoles only has become. We've, uh, you know, tried to review boats in a certain way. We have a certain style um, that we've seen more and more, you know, throughout the industry uh, recently. But it just means we're, you know, trying to lead the way, and I think we've been successful at at pioneering a lot of this, at least through social media, and that's all we, we try to do. We don't expect to be the only ones; um, we just try to be the first ones. So, just with Susan's comment right there, um, at least with me, and I know everyone here agrees, one of the main things we're going to try to figure out is how the heck we can have all the fuel that we want in here, but also have a solution um, for women to have a boat. I have a two-year-old daughter, I have, a, I have another girl on the way, so it's three women against me, I lose that battle every time. I have two girls and my wife. Same situation, we got Eric back there, he's got the only boy, he's my brother-in-law and another partner with, with us here in Center Consoles Only, um, so he's good, he can do his business over the transom, but we do gotta, you know, if we're gonna be riding around on these boats and we're gonna maybe build one to do the sea trials on and stuff, we gotta, we gotta have that solution, so thank you for bringing that and putting the men only in quotations because we definitely don't want to make this, you know, men or anything only. We, we, we do want to try to figure out how to make this, um, you know, something for the family as well when the fishing isn't going on or if the women are out there fishing and leaving the men at home because, again, I know a lot, of, a lot of women out there that'll dance circles around all of us here. Ladies so. only fishing trips, more and more popular every day. Yeah. So, hey, well, I think uh, we got most of it. Um, I want to thank you guys for spending the time with us. Uh, going through this, it was uh, exciting for us. We really didn't prepare a whole heck of a lot besides a few random pictures that we that we popped up and we had this console here that uh, was just brought over just to get ideas from it um, and some dimensions. So we want to try to do more of this and also like think about that. What what have you always said? What is that idea that you've said in your mind? You're like, man, I wish that this boat had this. I wish that that boat had that. Maybe we can integrate it with Adriano here and Orion Boats on this boat now that it's on, you know, the early design stages. What can we do to separate this from, you know, the other companies? Not that you're going to invent a brand new style of boat altogether, but maybe there's a few things that a lot of companies just are used to doing, you know, what the other companies have all been doing. And maybe there's some, maybe the right solution hasn't even been thought of yet. Maybe we can be the ones to be part of it. And, we have, you know, so many people involved with Center Consoles Only here and, and, and thankfully the, you know, on all of our platforms that, you know, there's got to be a ton of ideas out there between all of us. And if we can just put those in a, in a pot, pick out the best ones and make, create a console, create a deck, um, a leaning post and whatever comes after that, you know, I think it'd be a lot of fun. It'd be really cool to have you guys involved and we appreciate the, the time that you uh, spend here with us. We'll be doing more of these on YouTube. It's a lot easier. We got our deck here that we built out. We barely use this thing. So... Um, again, we hope you appreciate the, or enjoy the presentation. It looks, looks pretty legitimate through the camera I'm, I'm seeing there. So let us know what you think. How can we improve this? How can we make this more fun for you? What else can we cover? All that stuff. Let us know. And, uh, we and have also a ton of reviews on boats still dropping 
uh, weekly. Make sure to tune into those. Um, thank you again from me, from the rest of the guys here as well, um, for tuning in with us and, and sharing your thoughts and your questions and your comments here. Um, make sure again to like and subscribe if you haven't already. Share this with your friends. Um, make sure to tune in weekly as well. Uh, we'd like to make this a weekly occurrence, uh, assuming we have enough progress throughout the build, throughout the, uh, the design process. Uh, try and incorporate some of these design elements into the next segment and kind of show you the progress from what we've, uh, what we've surmised from your <clears throat> comments and your input. Okay, one, more, one last thing. Uh, specs and pricing are available for the Orion. Um, just email support at centerconsolesonly.net or just send a direct message or a message right here through YouTube. Uh, reach out to us and we'll get it out to you. Uh, we're working with Adriano on getting the finer details and all that together, but we pretty much have preliminary pricing. Um, a $5,000 deposit secures your build slot. Yep. It's about three to four months right now. Uh, lead time to get all this stuff done, we're assuming. Um, it shouldn't be much more than that. We're, we're definitely working with a, a good group here to make sure that three to four months doesn't turn into 11 or 12 months. So um, any questions you have, reach out to us. Uh, CCO Yacht specifically, Brian uh, operates that page, so you'll be uh, dealing with him or center consoles only with myself. So, you know, anywhere you want to contact us, let us know. We'll get all the answers for you. Thank you again. Subscribe. Like and share. Like and share. We'll see you again soon, guys. Thank you very much.